Hi and welcome to Serenity Cove Crafts. My name is Linda and I'm just so excited that you're here joining me. Um, I've been doing this for about almost a month now and it's been four weeks of trial and error, mostly error I will admit. Um, just you know malfunctioning lights and camera system not being able to get the angle right I actually today for the very first time I got the new equipment so look look at that yay I'm able to get a good camera angle here for you so my little dog and pony show is uh, we're going on the road I guess we're, we're doing a little better so if you have any comments just go ahead and drop them in the comment line now today we're going to make this gorgeous unicorn beanie okay so I made this one yesterday and See how cute that is? The mane is a bunch of ringlets. And we've got the ears and a horn. Now, I did this yesterday, um, but I had accidentally deleted the first half of the video. Oh my goodness. So I figure I'm going to have to start all over with you guys. Um, and I chose to do it in different colors. So today, I am still using the pink macaroon. I really love that color. Now that is... Let's see, Bernat Premium, and it's pink macaroon. Oh my goodness, I've decided to um, use this teal, and it's really not showing up. It's looking like a blue in my camera, but it, it's a, a greenish blue, and it is called, well, look at that, teal. And for the ringlets, this time, I think I'm going to use, I'm going to use this Lion Brand Mandela Sparkle. So I figure unicorns, you know, a nice magical sparkle. And this is a lighter weight. It's only a three. And it's called Draco, D-R-A-C-O. So that's uh, a nice little yarn. So we're just going to start. Now I've got my pieces, except for the ringlets knit so far. I like to knit, I have knit the pieces and then assemble. So this is the hat or the beanie. I've taken it off the machine. So we're just gonna give it a good stretch. Go ahead, give it a good stretch. Okay. Now I'm just going to zoom in a little. There we go. Look at that. I'm getting semi-technical here. Okay, I'm just going to give you the row counts. Now I cast on. Now for this one I did, I used my Centro 48. So what I did is I cast on with this teal. I knit 40 rows. And then I changed over to this pink. I knit 40 rows in the pink. And then I switched back to the teal and another 40 rows in that. So this is where we're at right now. So I'm just going to tie off the ends. We're going to cinch them. But what I like to do here, there we go. I'm just going to reinforce the stitches that are right around the top here. I'm just going in with my needle. Okay, I'm just picking up these stitch. Whoops. Hang on. There we go. And you do this until you get all the way to the other end. Now this is the way that I taught myself how to do it and it's the way that I do it. Um, I tie off, I cinch and tie the ends first and then I double my work. Um, a lot of people out there, they, they don't. They double their work first and then cinch the ends while they're together. Um, if you have a preferred way of doing it, go ahead. Do whatever works for you. I, I taught myself this way and it's working for me. So, uh, you know, just go take, do whatever, do whatever, you know, way you want to do it and the way that works best for you. Now I'm just going to tie this. Just tie it a couple of times. Okay, 
we're going to do the exact same thing with the other end. I mean, I, I've mentioned before that I do not know how to crochet or hand knit or hand sew. So I, you know, kind of had a little bit of a challenge. And I know there are a lot of you that are like me. You don't. You bought a machine because you don't know how to knit. You don't know how to crochet. And whenever I'd see people pulling out a crochet hook to close ends, to join ends, and oh, I'm telling you, I, I would just make a great big mess. I would end up with oh, such a disgusting piece of work. Finally, I, I figured out how to do it with just a needle. And I do have a tutorial on how to, you know, close a tube, the flat edge with a needle. And if I can learn how to do something with a needle, um, I'm telling you, I'm going to do it. <laughs> Crochet hooks and I, we just, we're not on the same page. But uh, I do use a crochet hook though, when I am doing fringe. I'm pulling fringe through a scarf. I do need the crochet hook. Uh, and I have had to adapt with that, but I'm not crocheting, so. So there's that. And I know there's so many people out there, like I'm sure that you're a wonderful crocheter or knitter, and you probably just don't understand what I'm babbling about. But then there's others who, who would completely relate. Okay. So I am going to, this is a nice and stretch. So I'm going to double my work. So I am holding it in on itself. Okay. So what I'm doing now is I'm just, I'm securing my ends. So I'm going straight into the center from this outside piece. And I'm going right through the center on the inside. Now I'm going to tie these off. I always over tie. Uh, I was just raised that way. <laughs> it's genetic. We overdo things on my bum side of the family. Okay. So. I'm going to, we're going to hide the tail ends. I'm just going to hide it between the two layers. So with the needle, we're not poking through to the other end. We're just going in between. And we'll pull that out and snip the end. Okay, so we have the hat made. Now I chose to do the horn and the ears in the same, in the turquoise instead of switching it up like I did on that first hat. So the horn just grab my instructions that I've written down here. Okay, so for the horn, now I am going to, yes, I'm going to be putting, I'm not sure if I mentioned this, I'm putting the row count down in the description. So just go ahead and hit that more button and the row count will be there. So, you know, you can put, put me on mute. You don't have to listen to me babble. <laughs> so with this, with the teal, I did uh, for the horn 14 rows and I made one. So what I'm going to do here, we're going to, I'm going to cinch, I'm cinching and tying off both ends. We're not going to be doubling the work. We're just right now, we're just, just tying it off. Keep your tails for right now. I'm going to hide, I chose to hide the shorter end. All right, and then we hide, always hide it the same way. And I put it inside the work. And so what we're going to do now is we're just going to flatten it as best you can. 
and we're going to start, we're just going to pick an end here over the end where we've cut, we've cut the yarn. We're just going to kind of, we're going to start a point. We're going to start rolling. We're going to be rolling from right over here and we're going to be keeping a really tight roll. You can see that along this end and you see it's going to taper off and it's going to get larger on this end. You just want to keep it pretty tight at the end here that's going to be the tip, the pointy end of the horn or as pointy as we can get it. There we go. All right. Now what we're going to do is mattress stitch um, this side here. with the other end of the yarn tail. I'm gonna pick up a couple stitches from one side and then grab a couple from the other side here. Don't pull too tight. So I'm tangling myself up here. Okay, I get to the top, I'm just gonna knot it. Let's, let's tug this a bit. There we go, just tug it a bit. So we're just going to tie it off and then we're going to hide the end inside the horn. And for the ears, two ears. And for the ears, I knit 12 rows on my 22 needle. So we're going to take one end and we're going to cinch and close this end. I'm not going to cut that yet because we are going to be using it. Now with this bottom end, now for the bottom end, I like to, we're, we're going to be partially cinching it. We're not going to be closing it up. What I like to do, let me just come over here to show you. I like to whip stitch or sort of just kind of go through like this with the yarn end that's left here. And I'm just closing it up this way. I find that it's just easier for me personally to sew onto the hat doing it that way. Um, if you just want to sew it without stitching this down like this, go ahead, do that. I said, my friends, it's anything that works for you. There's more than one way to do most things. Okay, and I'm just going to tie that. I'm not going to cut this. Now we're going to make the point in the ear. So we're going to be doing like that. So we're going to go back to the end that we cinched. Going to re-thread that needle. And 
we're just going, we want to make a point. So you're going to pinch it sort of up here. See how that makes a little point? And I'm just, I'm just sort of whip stitching. I'm just kind of going back and forth. I'm doing, let's see, maybe about four stitches. I just want to, we're basically just tacking this top part here so that it's pointy. See that? Okay. So I'm just going to try this off. So I'm going to do the other ear off camera. Okay. At this point here, this is where you would hide your tail and cut it down. <clears throat> So there, we have one ear. Okay. So now, to sew them on, the tail end here, you know what, I think I'm gonna actually take separate yarn because this is possibly not going to be long enough, so it's all right, I'll just hide it in the end here. Now, I am going to get my tape measure. <laughs> I have a habit. I don't measure. But to tell you the truth, I, I eyeball everything. Just kind of figure out, how hey, that'll look good here. Um, but we'll be a little bit more professional with you, okay? So, let's see. I think... I'm just trying to figure out where I would like that. What part of that? Right. So now I'm just going to figure out where we would like this. Now I always line my ears up with this center point here that we've cinched. And I'm thinking that we could probably sew it about an inch to the side, right about there. And then this way, you sew the other one about an inch to that side. And they should be about two inches apart. Normally I'd have it on that mannequin head. Makes it easier to sew. That's all right. I want you to be able to see what I'm doing. Yeah. We're going about an inch. Just grabbing a couple stitches. I'm going to leave this tail end because I will be going down this way and then across the front and I will tie off when I get up here. Right. I'm over here, so I'm just going to kind of go through and then underneath in the back. Uh, like that. Now for the cor the horn, you're going to be doing the same thing, but you'll be sewing around it. You see, this is why I go over it twice, because you can probably see that there are some gaps in between. That's all right, I'll get it from the other side. So I'm coming around this way now. And when I go back, I just like to pick up, almost like the mattress stitching, when I come back this way, I'll grab a couple from there and a couple from this side. I just like to make sure it's stitched on really well. Okay, 
So I'm over here now. I am going to tie my ends together. And I'm just going to hide these inside my work. There we go. All right. So I'm going to do the same thing over on this side and then I will be back. And all right, I'm back. Now I have the two ears done. And now we're going to sew the horn. I decided to tie the horn off and hide the tail inside the work and then just to get a longer piece of yarn to sew it on. So what we're going to want is, if you look the horn, you, know, you can see it kind of sort of look, looks like it goes up in one direction. In my case, it's where the seam is, where I sewed across. Okay, so we're just going to put that on the forehead. Let's see, move it like that. We want it in between the two ears. And in my case, I am going, let's see, Oh, maybe add one and a quarter inches, one inch from that center. So I'm just going to mattress stitch our way around. Have a couple of stitches from this side. Just going to, I like to tuck this tail in under what I'm working on. That way it's not in my way. We're going to grab a couple stitches from the hat. And you do just want to constantly make sure that you're, you know, you're on track here. That your horn isn't getting all out of whack on you. Now I'm just going to pause this now till I get around to this side. And I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. I've made it all the way around to this side. Okay. And it's looking pretty good. So now, just want to... Just let me cut this down a bit. I'm just going to tug at the ends here. I'm going to tie this off, hide the ends into the work. Right. Okay, so we have that so far. Don't worry, it's going to look more like a unicorn once we get the mane on. <laughs> Oh, it looks pretty funny now. So we'll be doing the mane. We'll have ringlets kind of coming down here. Some shorter ones for the bangs in the front. And then some longer ones for the back. Okay. Now that we've got the horn and the ears done and the beanie, we are going to be making these cute little ringlets here for the mane. Okay, there we go. My machine's in the way. There we go. We'll do some shorter ones for the bangs here and some longer ones for the back. Now I do have another tutorial that shows you in great detail how to make ringlets for doll's hair. And that is the exact same technique. We're just not using hair color. We are using I'm using this Lion Brand Mandela. It's the sparkly, sparkly stuff. So we're only going to be using five pins. When you're casting on the first needle, you go under in front. The second needle behind. The third needle in front. Fourth needle behind. Fifth needle in front. Okay. At this point, 
just going to feed it into the yarn guide. All right. Now, what we need to do is this is the stitch number five. Hang on. One, two, three. Yes. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Oh, goodness. So it's this is number five. So we want the yarn. We're going to keep cranking in this direction. We want the yarn to come over here and fall under the bar right to the left. Okay. Once it does, we stop. Now we're going to turn and crank in the other direction. I'm just going to turn it like this. Okay. And when I get to this bar that's to the right of my first pin, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to wait for the yarn to go underneath the bar here. There we go. Now we're going to go back in that direction. The stitches you want to keep an eye on are number one and number five. If they're going to act up, those are the ones that are going to act up. It's usually number five. So we'll see. So one, two, three, four, five. Oh, and it behaved. So right here, I'm waiting for the yarn to go underneath that bar. Now I'm going back in this direction. Okay. And I'm just going to tug at this tail end here just to make sure that it's pulling down. And there we go. We are going under that bar. Now we're going back in that direction. And this is actually behaving. I think it really likes this um, lighter yarn. Under the bar, and we're going back in that direction. Under that bar, back in the other direction. Go. And I do like to tug at the tail here once in a while. So, back over there. Went a little too far on that one. We're going back. And you keep doing this until you get the length you want. Now, personally, I, I really, honestly, I don't measure. I don't. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to do the ones first for the bangs. So I'll do maybe three of them. And I'm basically doing them until they hit, once they hit the tabletop here, approximately seven inches. Okay, and then I will be back to show you how to cast off. All right, I'm working on my last row. And I'm bringing it over to this side. All right, at this point, I'm going to cut the yarn tail off. Okay. I'm going to remove the yarn from the yarn feeder. Now we've got these two needles here that don't hold stitches. So we're going to pull the yarn out from those. Okay. Now we're going to crank back in this direction without any yarn going under the needles. And we're just, that's just casting off. We're just releasing the stitches. Now, see that? I'm just going to start picking these off. There's number three, number four, and number five. Um, my Addy really loved this yarn. It did not give me any issues at all. So look at that. Oh, and I probably didn't mention this time around, but uh, this is also how you would make an I-cord if you don't have an I-cord maker. But the great way, the great thing about making your I-cords with uh, your circular knitting machine instead of an I-cord maker is that you can use heavier weights, weighted yarn on here than you can in your I-cord maker. So that's just something to keep keep in mind. And if you wanted to go ahead and do this on your I-cord maker, go ahead. Do your I-cord and the technique is the same. So I'm going to cut one end down a bit just so it doesn't get in my way. And once I've stretched this, it actually ended up being uh, yeah, 13 inches. So you're going to hang on to the end piece here with your one hand. 
the one that has the tail attached to it still. And with the other, we're just going to start twisting. Um, <laughs> I tend to get cocky and like that. Okay, I just tend to get cocky and go fast. And then I end up dropping it and have to start all over. So I demonstrated that fairly well, did I not? Uh, so we're just going to twist, 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 twist. I personally do not count uh, how many times I'm twisting. Just kind of go by the way I feel. There you go. And now we're going to take this shorter end and we're going to pinch it in the fingers with this end. And we're going to pull this out like this and we're going to let it go. Boing! Look at that! Look at that! Look at that! Isn't that gorgeous? I'm sorry, I always have to do the sound effect. <laughs> the boing when I let it go. Oh my goodness, I'm telling you, I was more mature when I was 16 than I am now, and I'm far from 16. <laughs> I'm saying that. Uh, okay, so this end here, what I'm going to do, is we're just gonna highlight, hide this tail end. So I'm just going to weave a little bit into this, um, this ringlet, and I am going to, the yarn in the in the needle and then just pull that through there we go we'll just cut that and there we go we have one so then actually this one ended up being a little longer so we'll probably sew it to the back now I'm just going to keep going and I'm going to try to make try to remember to make three that are smaller shorter three or four for the front and then the rest will be sewing on the back so you go ahead make up a whole bunch of ringlets and once we have that done uh, then we will sew them onto the hat all right so I'm back now I have four of these smaller ringlets knit for uh, the bangs and I've got some longer ones I only have two of the longer ones for the back of the main done so far I'll work on more of those later I just wanted to show you how to attach the ringlets. Now I started before I realized I was not recording. Oh, that's all right. I'll finish this one off and then, and then I will uh, just show you how to do the others. Give me a second here. Right. Hide the tail end. Okay, so I'm basically just positioning them just a little bit below the center, the hole, the center um, where we had cinched the hat. I'm just kind of putting them right in front of that for the bangs. So I'm just grabbing one of them. I have the tail end. I'm threading that into my needle. Um, let's see here. Doo, 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 doo. Going to come in, let's see, put this one right about here. I'm just going to go in, grab a little piece of the hat, go through both layers of the ringlet, pull that through, and And grab a little bit of the hat on the other side, go back through like so. And then I'm just going to tie this off. Now, let's see. And there, I'm going to try to hide it in the hat in between the two layers. Yeah, that's better. And yes, with this. This particular yarn, see the different colors I got? And this is all the same yarn. This one, I guess, is where the colors changed. So I have a little bit of purple, tiny bit of blue. But I think it's going to look cute. Okay, so I will put, say, one up towards the middle. And just go ahead and tie it off. See. 
Okay, and I'll throw one more here. Let's see. Throw it over here. I mean, it's not rocket science. You just put them wherever you want. Wherever your kind, beautiful little heart would like them. This is your baby. It's your project. Do what feels right to you. Now I'm just going to show you some of the back ones. Here we go. I'll just grab one of these. Now for the back, the longer ringlets, the longer part of the mane, I'm just putting them, oops, I'm just putting them, we're starting at the same spot the same area, but we're going to start on this side, on the back side of the center. And I am just going to, um, I'm not measuring or counting a specific amount of ringlets. I'm just making them, I'll make three or four as I go along, sew them on. And then you know, just keep going until I think the hat needs more or has enough rather. So I probably wouldn't make them longer than that, you know, and do, let me just show you on this one here. Okay. Now for this one, I kind of went down. I only went down maybe uh, three layers, like three rows maybe and did them. And then I just pretty much capped it at that. Um, I, was going to go a little ringlet crazy and <laughs> do a whole bunch. And then it occurred to me that, you know, we don't, don't want it to be awkward or dangerous or something that, you know, could get caught. So I'm going to leave you with that. And once I'm completely done, I will come back to show you my end result. All right, I'm back. Uh, just real quickly here. Uh, there we go. Yeah. I was going to do more ringlets, but my favorite yarn needle broke. So I guess that <laughs> that's the universe's way of saying that's enough ringlets, lady. So see what she looks like. Okay. So I'll just go over the count that I have. Let me just take this off. Off of the head. All right. So there, so all together here, I've got four of the shorter ringlets and I believe they were about seven to eight inches long before I twisted them. And then for the long ones, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight in the back and four in the top. So that's 12. Um, it probably could use a couple more but that's entirely up to you. And then there again is the one that I made yesterday with the pink. This one was a thicker yarn so that it looks fuller. And with that, if you enjoyed this tutorial, go ahead and hit that like button. Leave me a comment. I'd love to hear from you and subscribe so that you'll find out when I have my next videos loaded. You take care and thank you so much for spending this time with me.